down to something as simple as greeting <laughs> someone in the morning, you know, Jesus talks about it in his workbook. He'll, he'll actually take it down to that subtle uh, of level. And then what we're saying is there's a, there, the whole idea of accusation, nobody likes accusation. Um, in fact, Jesus even says in his text, he said, the role of the accuser will appear in many forms and it will seem to be accusing you, but have no fear, it will go at last. I can't tell you how helpful that line was to me, as I was just trying to be a loving being, just happily about my business of radiating love, and then out of the blue, someone comes along and go, you, I don't like you, or I think you're this, or I think you're that, and I go, ooh, it's that poke getting poked on Facebook. <laughs> you get a little poke that comes in there, and it's like, where did that come from? And Jesus is just saying, the role of the accuser, this ego role of the accuser will play out many, many times, countless times, until you realize the wholeness of mind, that there's only one of us. It takes two to have an accuser. Uh, you, you can't have an accuser pointing a finger Jesus uh, seemed to collect a few accusers in that parable as he went on, you know, when he started to really crank up the love <laughs> near the end, you know. Uh, it seemed like the role of the accuser got cranked up uh, to be a mob. Kill him! Kill him! Crucify him! A, a, a mob of shouting people, that role of the accuser. But, but have no fear, he says, it will go at last. In wholeness, there is no split, there is no duality of having a, a self that can be accused and a self that is doing the accusing. That's that, that fundamental split in consciousness. So does that mean then, David, is that what then means that it never happened to begin with then, if you're in that? Yeah, that split, you know. It, yeah, it's only the split that makes it yeah. real. There's nothing wrong with, with anything. In yeah. other words, it's almost like um, there was a great movie that we had called Simone, where the main character, Al Pacino, he fabricates this, this movie actress with computer images, and he makes movies with her, and she becomes famous and adored by the world, <laughs> and, and he's all doing it, you know, to, to get famous himself, and he becomes famous because she becomes so famous, and the world adores her, and she does talk shows all over the world, and a concert, and she, it's the fame comes out of control, and then at some point, he, he's, he becomes jealous <laughs> of the one that he made up, because he's not <laughs> getting as much fame, and even in the Academy Awards, he, he, he has her do a taped interview, but he forgets to thank himself. <laughs> uh, in the Academy Awards, and then he's really hurt. How could I have forgot that? And in the end, his, his little girl discovers everything that he's done with his computer, you know, and he's so shameful in the car, and he's looking at her, and, and she looks at him with all the love in the world, and she says, Dad, we're fine with fake. Just don't lie about it. <laughs> and I thought, that's the Holy Spirit. I'm coming through this little girl. We're fine with fake, just don't lie about it. In other words, I know exactly what you did, but I love you anyway. Just don't try to cover it. Don't uh, defend it. Don't defend it. Don't, just don't lie about it. And that's really what Jesus is saying. It's like, okay, so you made up a cosmic images of images. That's, uh, we're fine with fake. It's like, we, the Holy Spirit and I, are fine with fake. Just don't lie about it. Just don't try to just justify it and defend it and get so uh, up, hyped up about it and so forth. And to me, that's why, that's from this perspective, that's why I can be lighthearted with people. So what if they seem, from the world's perspective, to be fat or <laughs> breathing heavy? I don't care. Uh, I mean, really, what does that matter in the scope of love? Or what if somebody is judged by the world as being a pedophile, or a murderer, or a mass murderer. Uh, and suppose I go to, the, to prison, and, and people have come to me, I mean people have even come to my peace house. There was one man that was apparently wanted by the law, 
and, and he was a fugitive and so forth. And uh, he came to the door and uh, I opened the door and uh, I, some people had, had mentioned him and so on and so forth. But I'm just meeting everybody as if for the first time. Uh, for me, they are as white as lilies and as innocent as anything, no matter what the world has said about them. Some people used to ask me about, you know, what would you do if, if you found Osama bin Laden? I said, oh, we'd have a good lunch. Uh, I have a good chat with him, you know. They said, somebody said, I think he's tucked somewhere near the Bush Ranch in Texas. That's where he's hiding, <laughs> the last place on earth <laughs> anybody would look. But I said, oh, we'd have a good lunch. And this man came to the door and he, he looked at me. Apparently they had told him about me too, so I invited him in and he said, would you like a cup of tea? And we had a wonderful cup of tea. We chatted about all kinds of different things. and and. At some point, he looked at me and went, oh, I finally meet the great David. And I said, oh, I don't know what that means. But we went, I went right on with my chat. And then he, he looked at me kind of uh, near the end of our encounter after we had a couple cups of tea. And he just looked at me and he had this curious look in his face. And he said, do you know who I am? And I just smiled and I said, yes, I do. And he was like, even more, his eyes got even bigger. And I just gave him a big, long hug, and off he went. And then uh, a flatmate, a housemate, came in, and uh, I just mentioned the encounter and everything, and she just about freaked. She, uh, because she was part of the, whatever the story, the generated story was. And she said, you had what? You had tea with him? Like, you, you actually let him in the door? I said, of course I did. And she, I said, he was, I knew who he was. And she said, that's it, you knew who he was and you let him in the door? He was in this house, he was in this kitchen? Yes. I had a cup of tea, a couple cups of tea with him. What? You had tea with him? You know, it's like what you start to have. When you have this experience in your mind, which is where the experience is, you do realize what's real and true and what is a lie. Uh, the story is a lie. It doesn't so much matter whether it's a story of someone being a mass murderer or a pedophile or being some, someone famous. Do you know who Les has had that experience where he's had uh, a woman, what's her name in Australia that's so famous? Uh, that, Janet Holmes in Court. Janet Holmes in Court. You know, and, and people were, she'll, Les will just be real friendly, come on up to the cockpit and real friendly and everything and all of the the first officers and students get all, you know, tense because the woman in Australia is just apparently famous. I don't know who she is, but very, very rich. Very, very rich and powerful and famous and how people will act strange and different around people that seem to be famous, you know, as if like, oh, I'm in the presence of something, you know. But, but this just takes you deeper into the mind where you have this experience of just love where everyone is the same in that, that love. And, and the story, whether the story seems to be a negative story or a positive story, it just doesn't uh, have any bearing on the whole thing. Yeah, that's what I felt. It's been so inspiring with David since I met him, like that he never reacts like in that way. And that is so, so beautiful because I know that it is possible to come to that. And that's actually what I was sharing yesterday in the sauna it was coming like it's my choice to hold on to this pain if I feel like I'm reacting to whatever I'm reacting to like we were talking about breastfeeding at a child that seemed to be eight years old and but it's my thoughts like I, if I react to that and I want to hold on to that that means that I want to hold on to that thought just like the the time thing here that I had just this morning I was like holding on to the thought of time and oh I guess we were supposed to start with David talking at 9 30 you know <laughs> it was like this old thought of, of like that it's supposed to be in a way but that I see that that is just hurting me because then I can't be in the flow then I can't go with the spirit's guidance it's something that is distracting me from being in that and that I can see that okay I can see that and I really don't want to carry it anymore and I just have to reveal it to be able to let it go because I'm worthy of being in the presence of love. <laughs>